articles that are interesting. The Bumble dating app had a simple flaw, which is kind of fun. Now, Tinder had these dating apps um, reply. Oh, it's the same in Australia. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a teaching seems to be a dead end job here. Anyway, so the, the uh, Tinder app had a flaw. Tinder, apparently, the uh, purpose of these apps, I have not used them, is to find somebody near you so you can meet them and engage in some sort of dating activity right away. So proximity, like down to the mile, is considered valuable. And the original app would just, uh, I think Tinder, would just send your latitude and longitude directly to the phone. This is the kind of thing I found on a lot of apps, um, including a famous Indian uh, investing app that was this way for years. It would send secrets down to the phone, which would then process it on the phone. So all you had to do was inspect the network traffic, and you would see data you weren't supposed to see. So it would tell you the exact latitude and longitude of somebody, and then it would only tell you the distance and say they had anonymized it for your protection. So that was a flaw that made it possible to identify people. But then after that, they switched to just or other apps to just send you the distance. But they would send you the distance to ridiculous precision. So again, all and you could lie in your request. You could lie about your location. You could alter the outgoing traffic to claim to be somewhere else. So you didn't even have to drive around to go to a different location. You could do three rapid uh, queries claiming to be in different locations. And therefore, all you have to do is draw three circles, and where they cross, that's where the person is exactly. So um, what this Bumble app did was it blurred it by like a mile. So now uh, you only know to the nearest mile where somebody is, and therefore you only have a one-mile circle here. But the problem is, of course, the way they did it was the simplest way. They just rounded it off to the nearest mile. So all you have to do is move to exactly half a mile or one and a half or two and a half miles away. You just need to move until a small distance change flips it from like two miles to three miles. And then you know you're at exactly 2.5 miles at that point. So again, you can still track it down by adjusting your location until you, you get narrow circles. And so it's kind of cute. And he found some other fun vulnerabil vulnerabilities in the app too. So that's a fun report. Um, UC Berkeley has been ordered to stop growing until they actually address where they're going to put the students and stuff. This is a common issue in college towns. I spent all my life in college towns pretty much. And the colleges grow and it produces traffic and stuff and housing crunches. And the towns are always have an uneasy love-hate relationship with the college. They kind of like all those college students bringing in money, but they bring in trouble too. And so there's always a push back and forth. Um, coolest IoT device. I've seen testing in a while. Well, let's take a look at that. Flipper Zero. I think I heard about this one. Yeah, yeah. People say this thing is fantastic. Some people are buying it and stuff. Um, yeah. I've heard about this. I haven't tried pre-ordering one, but it's a tiny piece of hardware with all kinds of freaking stuff. Um, I'm not much of a freaker, so I haven't really paid much attention or understood what it does, really. Um radio hacking and stuff. Putting $10 on a pre-order for their next batch. Yeah, yeah. They just uh, shipped the first run. Good, okay. So uh, what does what all does it do? Or let you, let you uh, read and spoof these cards. That would be nice. Oh, this, this, uh, this looks like fun. <laughs> okay. Oh, it can spoof Bluetooth. Oh. Oh, infrared. Oh, are you, yeah, I see. This does look like you could get in a lot of trouble with this pretty fast. Yeah, that would be fun. All right. <laughs> well, I don't know if I definitely want one, but uh, it, it does have an awful lot of good features, doesn't it? My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> You've got a point. I think I'll put that in the news links to make it easier to find. I saw it like a few months ago, but I didn't pay a lot of attention. Yes. I think Caitlin and uh, Liz will definitely want them. Maybe Irvin? Yeah. This I thought was pretty interesting. Samsung is making memory with processor built into it. Each block of RAM has a processor directly on it. So it does processing in the RAM, which they say makes it like uh, twice as fast and everything. But um, the problem is uh, they already had a previous similar improvement in RAM and nobody cared. Nobody bought it. So. Apparently, their marketing is not too effective. But anyway, it sounds pretty cool. Um, and uh, everybody's hating on ShotSpotter. 
ShotSpotter came out about 10 years ago. It puts microphones around your city and then triangulates from the microphones and uses machine learning to figure out whenever anybody shoots a gun where they are, and then you send the cops there, and it turns out that it's garbage. Um, it, it doesn't work. When you go there, the cops do not find anybody shot a gun. When they try to prosecute people based on the data they got from ShotSpotter, it turns out it was all bogus and wrong. Apparently, it just doesn't work, which is true of an awful lot of machine learning things that I hear about. Um, sounds like a pretty good idea to me, and I don't know what the problem is. I don't know if it's the machine learning modules not working or the microphones being fooled by other sounds that are not gunshots, but in practice, it doesn't actually seem to do much good. And here's a multi-use toolkit that's being deployed across uh, Windows machines. Uh, there have been a lot of these multi-purpose toolkits that come in by multiple vulnerabilities and then uh, use your machine to do lots of bad things. There's always a new one. Anyway, let me get down to the official stuff and I'll make a second video for that. So I start